Rub up your engines! Peter Grant says, Scotty, I keep asking this, but how about an answer? How about trying to get your listeners a discount to ATS additives at Albuquerque? Okay, I have nothing to do with the buying and selling of stuff. That's one reason that people like watching me because I'm honest. There are no companies out there that are paying me money to say, buy this product, it's great, blah, 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 and they're paying me money to say, I don't do that. So I don't get involved in any of that stuff. I have companies all the time, they say, well, uh, if you make a video for us, we'll give a special discount to your viewers and all that. Uh, that is marketing. I have nothing to do with marketing because it goes down a slippery slope. They give you money and then you end up getting pressure to say things that may or may not be true. As it stands now, Hey, it's true. I'm telling you what I've learned over 56 years of working on a car. And look at this stuff. There's new products all the time. I try them out. And I tell you the truth. If money was involved, discounts, stuff like that, it would make it not real. And unfortunately, I know a lot of YouTube guys that started out as good mechanics and then they just turned into sales. And they'll do anything for money. I don't want to get in that slippery slope. So I'll never do something like that. One of who says... Any thoughts on the new Mazda CX-90? Should I get the Highlander instead? The CX-90 is much nicer at the same price. The CX-90s are nice. I've driven one. One of you viewers brought me one. I analyzed it. I like the vehicle, right? Toyota Highlanders can run for ever in terms of how it rides, the speed and stuff, CX-90 blows it away. Faster, nicer ride, right? But the Highlander isn't bad and it can last forever. How long do you keep your vehicles, right? If you keep them 100,000 miles or so, you'd probably be happy with the Mazda. But if you're a cheapskate like me, you want to go two, three, four hundred thousand 400,000 miles, 30 years later, still driving the same vehicle, you'd go for the Toyota. Hi, she says, what are your thoughts on a 2011 Nissan Maxima with 170,000 miles for 4,500? But I'm sure it has the dreaded Jatco CVT. Okay, well, what you want to do first is get the VIN number, call up Nissan dealer. By that number, they can tell you what kind of transmission it has. If it has a CVT, don't even think about buying. 13-year-old Nissan Maxima does have 170,000 miles. I'll offer the guy 35 and see what he'd do if it runs and drives okay. Okay, so Scotty, any suggestions on a used SUV? Something 2015, 2020. Okay, what do you want? There's a zillion SUVs, right? If you want a small SUV, stick to Toyotas. Their small ones can run forever. Maybe look at the Honda SUVs, right? Now, if you're looking at newest, newest ones, 2020 or so, more expensive ones, a lot of times you can get such a better deal buying like a Mazda or a Subaru. They're not going to last as long as a Toyota or a Honda, but their resale value is so much lower that you might be able to get one with lower mileage and get a much better price. I had a guy when I was in Rhode Island a few weeks ago, he bought me an Outland. And I said, why'd you buy that instead of a Toyota? He said, well, I wanted a RAV4, but they were all 15 grand more than this was. I said, well, for 15 grand, what the heck, maybe buy something that might not last as long, but it's a lot cheaper. Toyotas and Hondas are expensive because they're well-made and they last a long time. But they do cost a lot more. And if it's that kind of price differential, I can see somebody. If you're saving 15 grand, what the heck? Try one of the other Japanese companies. They still make decent vehicles. TDX older old piece of Scotty. What do you think about a 2024 hybrid Honda CRV Sport Touring? Okay, Honda makes great vehicles. The CRVs are great. Now, Honda hybrids are much better than their older hybrids. Their older hybrids failed. They used a different system than Toyota. They used more of a submarine type, and Toyota used a different system. The Toyota system system is the one that's pretty much used in them all today. And the Honda system is basically copying the Toyota system. They got different patents, but it's the same basic principle. So they're better than they used to be. And if you really like one of those, go ahead and buy it. Just myself, personally, I don't own any hybrids. If I did buy a hybrid, I would only buy a Toyota hybrid. They've got decades of engineering, and they keep improving it, where I'd still be kind of leery myself about a Honda. They do make pretty good stuff. You road test one if you like the way it rides and stuff. Go ahead, but I'm just, basically, I'm not a fan of hybrids, right? So I doubt if I'll buy one. Berto Ramirez says, I accidentally flushed water into my transmission. 04 Acura. Thought it was a water line and a radiator. Can I save the transmission? I ran the car not knowing. Well, I hope you didn't run the car very long. Water will destroy an automatic transmission. 
Now, this is the only time, really, that I'll ever advise anybody to flush their automatic transmissions. Because you got water in that baby, you got to get it all out. Draining and filling will not get it all out. Pay someone who has an automatic transmission flush machine to hook it up and flush everything out and replace it with new fluid. And then pray it didn't damage it. Hopefully you didn't drive it that far, because water will destroy an automatic transmission. But let's say you found out fast, you didn't drive it very far. And here's the thing, don't drive it to the guy. If it drives, don't drive it to the guy. Tow it to his garage, because you don't want to drive it at all anymore. It will destroy an automatic transmission. It can't take water. Rashad Hubby says, Scotty, can a bad IAC cause high idle? Well, of course it can. It's an idle air control valve. If it goes wanky, it can make it go too high, make it go too low. So can vacuum leaks, though. Don't go and buy an expensive part, because on some cars, the idle air control valve is part of the entire throttle. you got to buy the whole throttle assembly for five, six, seven hundred bucks. So check for vacuum leaks first, because vacuum leaks are more common. You get a vacuum leak, it sucks too much air, and that car idles too fast when you're just sitting there, right? So check that first. But if it is bad, the idle air control valve, of course, can make it idle too high. Now, sometimes they get stuck, so spray them with some spray cleaner, throttle spray cleaner, and then, then if that goes away, just clean them every once in a while. Jacqueline Wood says, Scotty, do you think a Lexus IS 350 could tow a jet ski? No problem at all. Sheesh, a Toyota Corolla can tow a jet ski. They don't weigh that much, right? They're on a little bitty trailer. You can tow that with just about anything. Yeah, you wouldn't have any problems with an IS 350. The only hassle is going to be putting the tow hitch on. Those have really expensive tow hitch setups that they bolt to the frame of the car. You can't put them on the bumper because the bumper's made out of plastic. So you got to go under and by a special tow assembly rig, and those rigs are pretty expensive. Ask to so Scotty, what's your opinion to discount tire or other chain tire stores? Okay, they generally have a lower price. Well, they used to have a lot lower prices, but now they've all turned into kind of scumbags where you buy the tires, they're expensive enough, and then they say, do you want to buy a tire warranty? And you're like, wait, I'm buying a new tire. Doesn't it come with a warranty? And they'll tell you, no, it doesn't. And they'll want you to pay anywhere from 15 to 25 bucks per tire for a guarantee for the tire, which to me is kind of disgusting. Now, I had some really bad experience with discount tire years ago. I went in and put tires on my wife's car because I didn't have a tire machine, and one of the tires blew out about two months later. I looked at it, and I saw they hadn't mounted it right, and the bead had come off, right? So I took it in, and they said, well, you didn't buy the extended warranty, so we're not going to warrant it. I said, your guy didn't mount the tire. I showed him. When you mount a tire, you're supposed to take the old tire off, right? Then the inside might be all full of crud rust, corrosion, they're supposed to buff it with a buffing machine, then they're supposed to get a tire bead liquid that they wipe around the ridge. They didn't do any of that stuff. When they put it on, I watched them. They didn't do any of that stuff. They didn't mount it right, right? So, a lot of those stores, they got minimum wage flunkies working there that don't know what they're doing. I've also had people buy them, even myself there, and then I get on a highway, a car shakes like that. I'm like, Jesus, those idiots didn't balance the tire right. Then I would take it to my tire balancing guys when I was in Houston Cotton Brothers, and they'd say, yeah, you're right, Scotty. They just didn't balance the tire right. They balanced it right, and the shake and went away. So I'm not a big fan of those places. Now, if you find one in your area that has good workers and it does good work, yeah, I found one in Rhode Island. It wasn't discount. I forget the name of the place, but it was in Middletown, Rhode Island. They did an excellent job. Job. I made a video, talked about them, and they did a great job. So you got to go case by case. But a lot of them, they don't pay the people much. They try to charge you more money for everything. They always try to sell you the most expensive tires. And hey, I'm not a big fan. Robert says, Scotty, should I put the stock air intake back on our 2012 Tundra 4.6? It was removed by the previous owner with a K&N cold air. Thanks. I would understand cold air intakes. They're only good if you have a race car set up programmed to make it run that way. It's made with a stock intake that it's a certain amount of airflow, right? And if you change that airflow by putting in a cold air intake, it actually might run worse. The track engine light might come on. I would go back to stock. They're designed to go back to stock. That's how they're supposed to be. Now, they do go faster in a race car, but like you say, they're all reprogrammed for that. And actual race cars, they reprogram it not only the day of the race, but mostly they have wireless stuff. They can even reprogram it while they're in a race. The weather changes, something goes, they can reprogram it on the fly. You can't do that on your own vehicle. Channel Siren says, not the glasses. 
just the thumbnail. Yeah, okay. Well, companies always sell me stuff, and they sell me these funky sunglasses, right? I do use them in the swimming pool. We got a swimming pool that's, you know, it's a salt water swimming pool, and the salt water eats up metal frames. That's all plastic. So I wear it when I'm going swimming. And they're kind of funny look. I guess it looks like I'm turning into Elton John or something. <laughs> I just put them out for a laugh for the thumbnail that I stuck on there. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.